Hi, my name is Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel, What Mandy Made Next. So today is Sunday, it's the 31st of July 2022 and today I'm talking and showing you mainly sewing content. Hurrah! So I'm going to start off with what I'm wearing. So I think it was June, something like that, So Over Eats, um, which most of you know um, they are a company that sell fabrics online and patterns and usually I think it's once a month they'll bring out a new pattern but anyway in June to celebrate our Queen's Jubilee in the UK they had an offer on where each day um, there was 30% um, off a tea dress so yeah I chose the Ada dress and this is what I'm wearing today so I've got some show notes down below uh, because I don't want to miss anything out as I'm reviewing these patterns. So we'll start with this Ada dress. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of it, I just want to explain something about the sizing with Sew Over It. Now, as most of you know, Sew Over It usually have the pattern size range from 6 to 20. That was their size range. Now, before I put on my lockdown weight, I have to blame it on something, um, I sort of petered between 18 and 20. And then they diversified and they were more range uh, size inclusive. And so they increased their size range, okay, from 6 to 30. But please be aware, which I forgot completely about, and I'll explain my little blooper in a moment. But if you, when you go to buy a pattern, you can either choose six, size six to 20, or you can choose the more extended range, which is 18 to 30. So although most pattern companies will go say 6 to 18 and then 20 to 30, something like that say. With so over it, please be aware that the 18 and 20 falls in the smaller pattern range and the larger one. Okay, and there's a reason. Now, 6 to 20 cater for a B cup bust, okay? So that's the difference the pattern sizes for 18 to 30 cater for a d cup so if you're a size 20 but you're only a b cup then you need to buy from the 6 to 20 um, pattern size range but if you're a d cup then you're looking at and if you're a size 20 say you would pick from the second range 18 to 30 okay and I forgot that they'd already done this adjustment okay so just wanted to clear that up so 6 to thir uh, 6 to 20 is the B cup and then 18 to 30 is the D cup you see so that is really useful because it helps to save time on not having to do full bust adjustments which I did for this dress and it's too <laughs> it's too baggy now. Oh, I don't know why. I just go and rush ahead and I just don't think. But anyhow, let's talk about the pattern. OK, so I've explained about the size ranges. OK, and then they suggest you use um, a flowy type, you know, a fabric with drapes such as rayon viscose. I chose this one. I've got um, a sample of it here as well. I chose this one. It was from Abercorn's. So I think all in all it's cost me about £15 probably to make this. So yeah. Now there are two variations with this Ada dress. You can either make it just with the long, you know, long sleeves or... There's another sleeve pattern included where you have this um, shide, shide elastic here. 
so those are the notions you need you need your shark if you're going to make this um view you'd make um you'd purchase shiring elastic or shearing whatever you want to call it you're interfacing obviously and they suggest the invisible zipper i don't like invisible zippers i don't think they have the strength i prefer um, a lapped zipper and that goes in with the vintage as well to have the lapped zipper so um i always choose um the ordinary zipper i don't like invisible so this is the ada okay and it has this lovely curved uh, empire waistline which is meant to be really flattering especially if you're curvy like me now as you can see there's quite a bit of excess fabric here and the reason is is because i did a full bust adjustment because it's gathered underneath okay so what they suggest you do is you put a dart in because the ada doesn't have darts but with the full bust adjustment you put a dart in now i'm a subscriber to the sew over each stitch school there so they have this platform you can subscribe there's different tiers i subscribe to the lower tier because that's enough for me i've also got some classes on there which i purchased a long time ago but um for me i'm okay with the lower tier at the moment and it's a really good it's a really good platform because you get free patterns on there now and again and there's lots of tutorials so they'll show us three pounds costing three pounds but because I subscribe to the Stitch School, I get them free. And there happened to be a tutorial on how to do a full bust adjustment on the Ada. Because what they were saying, instead of increasing the gathers under the bust, you needed to put a dart in, you see. So I followed along and uh, did this full bust adjustment. And it was only afterwards when I was writing up my notes that I realised you didn't need to do a full bust adjustment because you cut out a size 20 top from the second size ranges, which meant that it already was catering for a D cup. So that's why I've got this excess fabric here. But never mind. It was a good it was a good learning curve for me. I learned quite a lot from this tutorial. And as luck happens, they also have another tutorial on how to um, use the shearing elastic. So that was a really um, good tutorial on there about that. So, yeah, there was a lot of hand-holding for you, should I say. If I made this again, which I'm going to, I would not obviously do the full bust adjustment. And also, I would make sure it was a longer length. I went for the shorter length and I don't know why because I have not got the figure for wearing shorter dresses. I need to have my dresses cut, cut off say mid calf. <sighs> but anyway, I had to... <laughs> you just live and learn, don't you? So um, what else can I tell you? Yes, you can have like I say, the gentle puff sleeve, or you can go for the shirred uh, sleeve. You can also have the two different dress lengths. Um, anything else I need to tell you before I show you me wearing this dress? No, I don't think there is. I think I've mentioned yet. So, yeah, I'll pop a little bit of footage in of me wearing it. And, uh, yeah, it's a cringe moment for me. It's not one of the best makes because I should have made the dress longer and I shouldn't have done a full bust adjustment. But anyway, um, I shall sort of wear it locally, should I say. So that means around the house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here's some footage for you.
Lisa and her YouTube channel is called The One Lisa Show and Adam and his channel is Adam Sews. I'll pop links into their channels down below but most of you Sewists know Lisa and Adam and in collaboration um, they um, hosted a challenge called He Made June 22. So what you had to do in June was to make a um, sew a make make a garment for a male and upload it to instagram you see and of course i decided i was going to make my partner this um shirt it's simplicity 9157 and it's one of these a lot of people call them camp i've heard them called camp shirts bowling shirts I just call it a shirt, but with a Revere collar because it hasn't got a stand on this collar. It's one of these in the colour Revere collar. So when I measured my partner, he was coming out as a 48 chest. However, I thought it's going to be a little bit snug midriff around the abdomen, but I went with the 48 because I thought it would fit him better because no matter where I looked on YouTube or Google Den uh, full abdomen uh, adjustment or full belly adjustment FBA um, I couldn't find one usually they were for skirts or for trousers but none for shirts so if anyone's thinking of who's watching this who has a YouTube channel that's a good one for you to do is show do a tutorial and show us how to do a full abdomen adjustment because I was looking and some people were saying you know just um, make it a little bit wider at the sides but then your shirt would stick out you need to have a proper adjustment so yeah and then I thought if I I thought perhaps I could try to make the adjustment by using the same techniques as a full bust adjustment you know slash cut and slide but then i thought it might interfere with the tartan the pattern of the tartan so yeah i was a little bit stuck there so that's why i went with the 48 i sized up so it would accommodate his midriff you see so um let's talk about the pattern now uh, the fabrics it suggests is obviously cotton types. This I purchased from Abacan. I think the whole cost probably for this shirt is about £12 in sterling. This is a polyester cotton, I would say. I can tell by the feel it's not a pure cotton. So it's like a polyester uh, mix in there. And blues do suit uh, Dave, my partner. So, yeah. I quite liked the choice of the, the fabric. So uh, the notions, if you're making the long sleeve version, you need six buttons because obviously you'll have buttons on the cuffs. But for this version, I made version, I think it's B, yes, B. Um, you just needed the four uh, buttons. And I think they were saying the act, you know, it's five eighths of an inch. Uh, button so they're quite small actually because usually with I'm, I'm used to doing blouses so you know you can go to town can't you with blouses because you have all nice fancy buttons but for a man it's not so fancy um yeah and then of course there's the the crossover because buttonholes for a lady are on the right and buttonholes on the for the gentleman are on the left and there's a reason for that you know so I'll just give you a little pause for thought and I'll come back to that. You think why if you don't know. So, like I say, the size range is 34 chest to a 52 and I chose to do the 48 to accommodate his midriff. Um, now, there was a problem with this pattern. There was a glitch with the collar. Okay, so with a revere collar, you cut two collar pieces out you interface one 
and then you sew a line along the top of that interface collar and then where the notches are on the pattern you put two snips in those two snips will correspond match up with your shoulder seams i mean i'm no great sewist on this but that's how i understand it and what you do is when you put your snips in you then fold that middle bit what's been you know because you've got your snips you fold that middle bit over and uh, press it so it's not in the way then you sew your two pieces of collar together and uh, when you come to put it on this is your facing you'll have markings here from the pattern so the edge of your collar will match up there but the notches should match up on the shoulder seam and they weren't they were just matching there was just a little gap and i was i was trying to get this you know and i just couldn't cope anymore that night with it so what i decided to do was google it in and also look on youtube and i'll name i'll put all the sewing sin but there was cynthia now her channel is called creative mama of three and she also mentioned that she'd had a little bit of confusion with the collar with this pattern um eliana sews and a gentleman and his channel was called happily dressed so all these people had found the same problem as i had but then karina good old karina and her channel is called lifting pins and needles she did a fantastic tutorial on these type of collars and she said don't make your snips sew your collar and when you put it on when where it reaches the shoulder seams then pop your snips in so that's what i did on my second shirt but that's what i did on this one as well but that meant you know it was a little bit of a mess but i've rectified it as you can see you know you can't tell um it's worked out okay but that was the only thing um so if you've got this pattern and you're thinking well why aren't my snips and the collar matching up with the shoulder seams that's why um the pattern i think is incorrect okay so that was that um so yeah when you if you look at karina's channel the lifting pins and needles she does she shows different ideas for different camp style collars and and talks about using different fabrics as well and and what to do so that was really interesting and very informative so yeah, he's, he likes his new shirt. He's got a pocket on it as well here. Um, I did mention modelling it and he said no. <laughs> but I will, uh, when we're on holiday and when he wears it, I will uh, take a couple of photographs so you'll be able to see. Now, coming back to the buttonholes. How I always remember, because when I'm knitting cardigans and things, buttonholes are on the right for girls because us girls are always right aren't we and buttonholes are on the left for the men and the reason is is because ladies would have a ladies maid and apparently when the buttonholes are on the right it's easier for the ladies maid to undress the lady and that's where it comes from apparently so there we go well i'll show you the next this one. is the next camp shirt i made this is out of um, a cotton. It's called Blue Geo Shirting. I purchased this from Holly's Haberdashery. Um, she's still got some on the website if you're interested. And this retailed at £9.60 a metre. So I chose these little navy buttons this time to go with the shirt. And Dave, when he tried on the other one, he found it rather big here. So he asked me to go down a size. So I have done, and this is a size 46 chest. However, it is a little bit 
got more snug, should I say, uh, on the abdomen. But uh, yeah, pleased how it all turned out. This time I didn't put any snips in the no, I waited like Karina suggested until I was um, attaching the face scenes and turning the face scenes around and and when I got to that stage I then put the snips in where in the collar where the shoulder seams were so that worked out okay then so yeah I'm getting a little bit more confident with these collars yeah, so that is my second shirt I'm too late to post any pictures for the challenge but uh, yeah thank you to Lisa and Adam because it gave me the impetus to make something for someone else and uh, yeah really pleased this is the ultimate shift dress by so Avery I wanted to make it larger because when I'm in Florida and it's hot I just want something loose and cool to wear I don't want anything restrictive on me you know I'm on holiday so I decided I would do a 20 on the top and a 24 on the bottom not that I want the shift dress closely fitted I just want something loose I can walk around in because when I get hot I get quite nazzy <laughs> so I thought you know I need something to keep me cool braided from the just about an inch above the waist I graded out from a 20 right to a 24 so by the time it was hitting the hip I was a, you know I'd graded out to a 24 and did the same for the back piece and they matched perfectly that's the the difference I made um, I've gone for a long sleeve and you might think well why go for a long sleeve where you're going somewhere hot but I just wanted a nice cover up. That the shoulder sleeve here um, does um, hang off a little bit, and I like my shoulder seams to, re you know, hit the joint there. So I think if I made this again, I would perhaps go for the 18 and maybe do a narrow shoulder adjustment. Now there is another <laughs> tutorial on the Stitch School where Julie shows you. A very simple way to do a narrow shoulder adjustment so I thought that's what I'll do next time but yeah um, I do need the 24 for the waist and the hips I definitely need that so uh, yeah I think I would perhaps go for an 18 and the sleeves I was going to do a bicep adjustment but I didn't need to uh, with the 20 so that was good news and uh, again great versatile pattern this is you don't need to put a zip in it's just a hook and eye or there's a new um, another tutorial on stitch school where they show you how to do a rouleau like a little rouleau loop um, and a button closure they've also got a new uh, pattern add-on for the ultimate shift dress and that is a frilled hem and also you can have i think it's an elasticated sleeve and um or a tie sleeve so there is um this pattern add-on so it's the two sleeves and the flounced hem which is all arranged at the moment isn't it all arranged so uh, yeah this fabric is um like a william morris print again i've purchased this from holly's haberdashery i'll tell you how much she's still got some left in there looked this morning it's called william morris viscos it's 12 pound a meter at the time i purchased this i purchased four meters because I was thinking of making the Sylvia robe by so over it but then last minute I decided no I need a dress so yeah <laughs> so that's my uh, ultimate shift dress and uh, I can't wait to wear it I'm glad I don't have flower boobs that's it <laughs> that's okay it's a beautiful it's really soft and drapey and I think this will keep me really cool whilst over there. 
So, yeah, next time I speak to you, I'll be coming all the way from Florida, hopefully. So before I go, I just thought I'd show you a little haul, just a little one. So this fabric I've purchased from Abercorn. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. And I thought I would like to make the Ada again. But this time I will make the longer version. And uh, yeah, no full bust adjustment. And we'll do a comparison and see how that turns out. I also purchased some more viscose from Holly's Haberdashery. This is called New Kate. Now, I love this. This retailed at £10 a metre. And I've bought, oh, must be three and a half metres. But there we go. Isn't that beautiful? And those are my colours because it's got um, the greys and the taupes in it. And I just think it's lovely. And I might, well, I'm thinking maybe a penny, an Ada would look nice in this. I don't know. Maybe a shift. But, yeah. I don't want to rush into something because I just really love this fabric. So I want to choose something that I'm going to wear a lot. You know, so... So yeah, when I get back, I can't wait to make something with this because I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I've not included any crafts in this vlog today because obviously there's been so much sewing to show you. And uh, yeah, when I get back from Florida, then um, I'll, I'll upload a craft vlog. So yeah, I will try and vlog to you now and again whilst on holiday to show you what I'm up to and uh, what crafting I'm up to or what I'm buying so yeah I'll see you soon until then bye